Well, as Sherry said, the title is Awakening to the Kingdom. Now, we, we've all been separated from God, uh, but God, but Christ has made a way for us to be reconciled to him. And the series is on uh, revival and uh, reformation. And But this is not just a big aggregate uh, summary of what goes on in the world. This is about you and me because the revival comes from the Lord. It's an awakening. It's a quickening within us. And uh, then we make a decision and the reformation re renewing our mind. And so the revival starts with one person. It starts with you. It starts with me. The reformation, which is the re comes from the renewing of the mind and seeing what God would have us do, that all starts with the individual. And so I know there's a lot of people talking about these topics, but I want you to know that we're bringing them to the point that it's r realistic and appropriate for you and for me at the individual level. So we're not just looking at aggregates, but we're looking at what does this mean for you and me? And so we're looking at awakening uh, to the supernatural realm of the kingdom of God. And w when Adam sinned, it separated mankind from God. And uh, we have all been dead in our sins, our trespasses and sins. That's a what Ephesians 2, 1 says. And so uh, the awakening, the awakening that we're talking about tonight is not awakening from sleep, but it's awakening from the dead. Job mm -hmm. saw it. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he, he prophesied there's going to be an, an awakening from the dead. Well, that's you, we're in the awakening. Woo! We're becoming a sensitive and it's by the spirit of God, uh, but it requires something of us to to move forward. Uh, and that's, of course, uh, you know, when it says the kingdom is at hand, repent. Well, what does repent mean? That means engage with God's thoughts. We've been, we've been uh, led and driven by our own thoughts, but now we need to turn and engage with his thoughts and what he's thinking about. That's what true repentance is. It, it's not about uh, uh, just being sorrowful. Now, it's godly sorrow that leads to repentance. Godly sorrow is not repentance. It leads to repentance. And repentance is simply turning around and thinking like God thinks. That's what true repentance is about, mm -hmm. engaging with the Lord. Uh, and so the kingdom is at hand. We need to repent because we've been moving away uh, from God's will and let's move into God's will and purposes. And uh, once we're born again, that's the, that's the concept, a spiritual awakening. And then there's a lot, this term spiritual awakening is in uh, the world in a lot of different ways. It's presented in a lot of different ways, but we're going to see tonight there's only one true spiritual awakening. It's awakening from the dead. All the rest of them are counterfeits. And so the true spiritual awakening is what Jesus talks about. And, and we are, we go from death to life and we become a new creation by the spirit, by the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit. And then we can have a new reality and it's focused on three things. The Christ who redeemed us, the spirit who awakened mm -hmm. us, and the kingdom to which we belong. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we're going to be focusing on tonight. Then we're really going to be looking mm -hmm. at that kingdom. So we were dead in our sins and trespasses, but we have been made alive. And oh, hallelujah. Uh, a couple of verses I want to talk about are from quicken. To use the word quicken. I, and this was in the King James, but I love it. We'll look at it from other um, translations as well. But I like the idea of quickened. And it, this is kind of the kind of awakening I'm talking about, where if you, for the women who have had children, uh, you had the child growing there, but one day there was a quickening of it, mm -hmm. uh, of that uh, child within you, and you knew there was a life within you. And that's Hallelujah. What, that's what Hallelujah. this awakening is we're talking about. There's a quickening uh, within us, and, and it's life, and, and it's by the Holy Spirit. So mm -hmm. I want you to read. 
a couple of verses, uh, for different translations from John 6, 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And then out of the New American Standard, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh provides no benefit. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and are life. Okay. So we see it right there. There's a quickening and it comes from the Holy Spirit. And, ooh, it's just like that baby within a, a mother's womb that all of a sudden it begins to, mm -hmm, to, move. to move and kick and it's alive. You know, there's something alive. Uh, that's quickening. That's the awakening we're talking about tonight. Mm. Uh, and you can think about one person that did it. I mean, there's a lot of people and we're all involved. Mm. But we'll look at uh, the man Saul who had a conversion on the road to Damascus. Now, he had a spiritual awakening there and his light is about mm. light. Hallelujah. And uh, is a change. He, he was on his way uh, to murder people and and he changed. He, he he began to engage with the Lord. And he even went to the backside mm -hmm. of the desert to find out what's really going on here. He had a, a, an awakening and he began to pray that we would all have such an awakening that our eyes would be open, that our Ooh, spiritual hallelujah, eyes hallelujah. would be open. Now, let's read uh, Ephesians uh, 118 that talk, talks about his prayer. What do you pray there in that verse? He prayed this over everyone who, who reads it. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints? Hallelujah. So he wants all of us to have the same awakening that he did. He, he, he had an awakening in his spiritual eyes, in his physical eyes. He began to see everything differently uh, on the road to Damascus and after that encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, we see the same thing prophesied in the book of Psalm uh, 119, verse 18. Mm -hmm. Which says, open my eyes that I may behold wonderful things from your law. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Lord, let us see. Let us see. That, that's see. what it is about. It's about seeing into the supernatural, mm -hmm. uh, supernatural realm. And, and we see it in also in Matthew 4, uh, that people have been sitting in gross darkness, but there's going to be a light that yeah, shines. Hallelujah. And that light is Jesus is the light of the world. Amen. Amen. Read this verse. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. Hallelujah. There has an awakening. Yeah, that it is. Hallelujah. We've all sat in darkness, but the light has come to us. Uh, Jesus is the light of the world. And so the things to focus on now are Christ who redeemed us, the spirit who awakened us, and the kingdom to which we belong. Ooh, hallelujah. Now the four verses for this uh, message is John 3, verses 1 through 5. First five verses of John 3. I'm going to ask Sherry to read it, and then we're going to discuss it. Okay. John 3, 1 through 5. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, our master, we know that you have come from God as a teacher, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus responded, Truly, truly, I say unto you, unless someone is born again, he cannot see, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Nicodemus said to him, how can a person be born when he is old? He cannot enter his, into his mother's womb a second time and be born, can he? And Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say unto you, unless someone is born of water, and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Okay. I want to explain these verses now. Nicodemus was a ruler of Israel. Uh, he was a teacher. He, he had great authority. And, but he saw something different in the life of Jesus. 
Jesus would uh, teach and then he would demonstrate. And we'll see in a moment that what he taught was the gospel of the kingdom. And then he demonstrated the gospel of the kingdom. And so Jesus was different than all of the other teachers, all of the other ministers that had been ministering in Israel, all around uh, Nicodemus and even Nicodemus himself. And Nicodemus recognized it. You have more power, more authority than any, any of us because you preach the gospel of the kingdom and then you open up the spiritual realm to us, uh, signs and wonders. And, and that is really exciting. And that's what kingdom ministry is. It, it opens up the supernatural realm to people. Amen. And, and that's who you are. You are a kingdom leader. And what you need to be doing is not just sharing uh, some uh, cold message, uh, but open up the supernatural realm. Operate in signs and wonders. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus immediately hallelujah. started responding about the kingdom because he's talking about an awakening, mm -hmm. not just to anything, but an awakening to the kingdom. Hallelujah. Where you haven't been able mm -hmm. to see the kingdom when you're born again and born of the, of the spirit, you will be able to see the kingdom and enter the kingdom and operate in the kingdom. So this is where this the title of the message is coming tonight. It's awakening to the kingdom. Hallelujah. And Jesus tells us the fundamental things about it. And uh, I know this is the way that we've all uh, operated. We've seen it. It's very, it's laid out here very simply, but I want you to know that there's more meat uh, that we can discuss tonight that I want to talk about. Uh, Jesus has just laid out the bones here. And it's bare bones. And there's more that we need to understand. And uh, it's an important concept that kingdom ministers don't just teach concepts and principles, but they demonstrate what they teach with signs and wonders. wonders. They open up the supernatural realm. Mm. That's the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. And what, what we need to recognize is that we're not uh, being awakened from sleep. And there's all kinds of uh, verses about being awakened from sleep. And it's, uh, the idea of awakened is uh, to be ready to act, to do something. Mm -hmm, it, it, mm -hmm, this is mm -hmm. talking about inspiring you Ooh, to do hallelujah, something. Hallelujah. And this is in the area of the kingdom, operate in the kingdom. And it's really important for us to remember that this is not awakening from sleep, but awakening from dead. And I have a couple of verses I'd like for Sherry to read. Uh, Ephesians 2, uh, 21. Ephesians 2, 5. Two, I'm sorry, 5. And then also Colossians 2. Uh -huh. 13. Ephesians 2, 5. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ by grace, are we saved? So uh, there's that word quickened again. That, that, that moves us into action. Uh, that we're not just uh, have some kind of intellectual insight, but it moves us into action. It inspires us. It empowers us. We are oh, away. This when... spiritual awakening is an awakening by the Holy Spirit. Mm. And uh, let's read Colossians 2. Same, it's Col basically the same. Colossians 2.13. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcised uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all of your trespasses. So this is not about being quickened together, uh, quickened by yourself. This is quickened together with him. And, and so now you've got a new position. Once you've uh, been awakened by the spirit and and uh, brought back from life then it's a uh, brought back from death from i'm sorry from brought, brought back from death uh then you're in a different position than you were because you're quickened made alive you're awakened well, with the lord jesus christ we've been raised up oh, and seated with him, him in heavenly places. heavenly places now i want to give my testimony because the, the awakening to the kingdom 
is something that happened to me. It happened mm. on a particular day and I, and I can explain it and I've never been the same. And perhaps you, uh, your quickening and awakening wasn't exactly like mine, but I want you to understand what mine is and perhaps that'll under, help you understand your life. And I was born again at the age of 13 and I was in a denomination where uh, almost every message uh, would end with something like this, you dirty sinner, you need to be born again. Well, I was born again at 13. And so for the next uh, several years, I, I continued to hear those messages and I didn't, I didn't grow spiritually. Uh, that's all I was feeding on. It was about evangelistic messages. And, and so I had to go uh, to another place where I could be fed spiritual food and, and mature and exercise my senses. Um, but it, during that time, I had very much a church centered mentality. And by that, I meant everything focused on the local congregation. And we were in a denomination. And after Sherry and I married, uh, we mm -hmm. continued to be in that denomination. We'd move to different cities, but always within that denomination. Uh, but we weren't growing spiritually. And we were certainly weren't coming alive to that's the kingdom. kingdom. That's right. No, that's right. see, uh, in Corinthians, it says that Paul uh, planted, Apollos watered, and God gave the increase. So that's where, where the spirit is bringing alive. So you've got to have some planting and watering in your life. And, and if all you have is you dirty sinner, you need to be born again, you, you're not going to be awakened to the kingdom. And so you have to have people begin to minister to you uh, the kingdom. So you begin to hear about the kingdom. And uh, so you, the uh, kingdom is planted in your life and it's watered by different ministers, but it's the Holy Spirit that brings it alive. Amen. And that's what it was with me. Even though uh, I was born again, when I was first born again, I had some insight into spiritual things, but it was soon... Uh, lost because the spirit was quenched in the area where I was. And, and, uh, but I had this, uh, church centered mindset that I had to be on in Sunday, uh, every service. I mean, I had to be every Sunday morning, I had to be in service. And, but I kept hearing these same messages that really never fed me about the kingdom or spiritual things. But, uh, when the Holy Spirit, when I was filled with the spirit, I still didn't know anything about the kingdom, but the Holy Spirit led us as a family uh, away from that denomination to a place where we heard the word of God. We operate and we saw uh, the operation of signs and wonders and miracles and many things happened. Uh, but even then, I didn't fully understand the kingdom. But when we uh, connected with the apostles and prophets, that was something in our heart that we had to connect with apostles and prophets because that was our calling. We, we had, uh, have had to look for them and find who God was connecting us with. And, and eventually we did that. We found, but up until then, we were just in churches. And so we continued to have mm -hmm. that church centered mentality right. until we began to connect with apostles and prophets. And, and then uh, it began to free us up. And, and then, so I, over my life in, uh, different services. Uh, I heard many people talk about the kingdom of God. I studied about the kingdom of God. I heard many messages about the kingdom of God, but it was not awakened to me yet. But on one day I was in a meeting in a congregation, in a uh, convention, and uh, there was a prophet teaching and he was teaching about the kingdom of God. A and I was so excited because it wasn't the information he was giving me. It was the awakening, the quickening of the Holy Spirit within me. I knew this was very important and I began to see into the kingdom. And so there were lots of people who planted uh, the word about the kingdom mm -hmm. in me and lots of people had water, mm -hmm. but it was the spirit that brought the kingdom alive. Now, that that's basically my testimony about awakening to the kingdom. 
and it caused me to have this great uh, passion and hunger and desire for the kingdom to know how to operate in the kingdom. And mm -hmm. I have not stopped my pursuit of the kingdom because uh, God said, or Jesus said, seek first the kingdom, kingdom. Mm -hmm. and his righteousness. Oh, hallelujah. That's, hallelujah. That's what, that's what we do. And that's what we will do the rest of our lives. Amen. First, Amen. The kingdom of God. But when, when I, everything went off in me and it was by the spirit of God, it wasn't the information I was receiving. It was by the spirit of God brought the kingdom alive and it broke all those chains and, and uh, boundaries off of me Amen. where I had thought I had to do these things in this order. I had to be church centered and now I am kingdom centered. I have my focus is on the Christ who saved me, Hallelujah. who redeemed me, the spirit mm -hmm. who awakened me and the mm -hmm. kingdom to which I belong. And no longer am I confined to every uh, a local congregation where I have to be there every time the doors are open because I have a calling and Sherry has a calling mm -hmm. to the nations. Well, we go to the nations. And, and, but it was uh, it all goes back to making those connections with apostles and prophets and then receiving that awakening, the empowering of the Holy Spirit Hallelujah. to begin to see things. I, I was just like the, uh, the Saul on the road to Damascus uh, before turn, being turned to Paul. And, and that's what happened to me. That's my testimony. It's by the Spirit of God that I was awakened to the kingdom. And that was exactly what happened to Nicodemus there in John Amen. 3. Amen. And his discussion with Jesus, and Jesus uh, explained it very uh, succinctly, very powerfully to him, that when you're awakened by the Spirit, you're going to be awakened to the kingdom. It's not just awakened to anything, it's awakened to the kingdom. Hallelujah. And what is the kingdom? So I want to explain mm -hmm. the kingdom. Amen. And, and a lot of this we've gone over before, but it's, it's good to see how it all fits together. Uh, this is an important message. And the kingdom we know from Romans 14, 17, the mm -hmm. kingdom is not about eating and drinking, but what, Jerry, read those verses. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So Hallelujah. it's about being in the Holy Spirit. That's right. Walking in the Holy Spirit, uh -huh. operating in the Holy Spirit. Being led by the Holy Spirit. It's the realm of the Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. The is the realm of the Spirit. Now, where are signs and wonders going to occur? They're going to occur, occur in the kingdom, kingdom, in the realm of the Spirit. Amen. And for people who are church-centered minded, uh, they're not going to see these things. They're going to have good teaching, good concepts, good principles, good rules and regulations. Do this, don't do that. Uh, they'll hear, be good, do good, get more. They'll hear all of those things, but they will not see the power oh, of the oh, Holy oh, Spirit oh, moving Amen. amongst them yes. and sending them to the nations. Amen. Okay? Amen. Amen. But let's look at this verse here. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 4.20. For the kingdom of God is not in words. Please listen. For the kingdom of God is not in words, but in power. Hallelujah. In dunamis. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's not, it's not, it's not about those concepts and principles and, and all of that is good. And we've got to renew our mind. But this is not about in words. It's about in power. The kingdom is about power. And Paul said uh, in 1 Corinthians 2, uh, 4 and 5, that I don't come to you with enticing or persuasive words of men's wisdom, mm -hmm. uh, but in the demonstration of the spirit and power so that your faith, oh, oh hallelujah. Is, so your faith, faith will not, not stand, stand in man's wisdom, but in the spirit and power. Mm, you need, mm, you need your faith 
standing and established on the power and that's the kingdom and, and there's a lot of people out there that have faith based on uh god's wisdom and that's good but there's a higher there's a higher faith but because it's based on with god's wisdom and the power of the holy spirit and that if you mm -hmm. want faith that's going to be effective it needs to be established on god's on god's power hallelujah now let's hallelujah. look at how jesus what he did about the gospel of the kingdom we'll just look at a couple of verses here and see whether or not jesus preached the gospel mm -hmm. of the kingdom and demonstrated the gospel of the kingdom hallelujah matthew, matthew 4 23 jesus was going about in all of galilee teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every sickness among the people hallelujah yeah that that is a demonstration Amen. of the kingdom Amen. this is not about rules and regulations That's this right. is about preaching the gospel of the kingdom and demonstrating the gospel of the kingdom by healing every sickness and every disease hallelujah now let's hallelujah. look at 935 i love this jesus was going through all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every sickness every sickness every, every disease. disease he preached the gospel of the kingdom and he demonstrated the gospel of the kingdom so remember oh, hallelujah. we need to be awakened to the gospel of the kingdom we need to be awakened to the kingdom uh, that's what it's all about that the awakening is not just awakening to do your own thing it's an awakening to the kingdom of god Hallelujah. and the kingdom of god not only do you preach the gospel of the kingdom but you demonstrate it that's what jesus did amen, let's see amen. about what he said to his disciples he said these verses in matthew, matthew 10, 10 7 and 8 and as you go as each one of us go preach saying the kingdom of heaven has come near heal the sick raise the dead cleanse those with leprosy cast out the demons freely you have received freely give okay hallelujah so preach the gospel of the kingdom demonstrate the gospel of the kingdom this is god jesus's instructions to you yeah, you're yeah. his disciple this is your instructions from the lord jesus christ hallelujah. the commander in chief hallelujah. of the lord's uh, army, army. Oh, Amen. glory Amen. to god and his commandment to you mm -hmm. and me is to preach the gospel of the kingdom hallelujah oh here's a phrase and it's a small phrase but i want you to get it as you go does that say that as mm -hmm. you go mm -hmm. preach the gospel of the kingdom this is in matthew 24 14. the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all of the world as a testimony to all the nations and then the end will come okay so Hallelujah. we haven't gotten there yet we haven't gotten to the end and uh, i was talking to a lady a uh, sunday and she had gone and i uh, heard a sunday school teacher to give her the uh, timeline on how everything was going to end up on this earth and uh, then uh, the pastor wasn't there so he he gave another timeline uh, during the 11 o'clock service about how everything was going to end up from the book of revelation well he didn't know by the spirit so the spirit wasn't telling him that because what this verse says that the gospel is going to be preached in all the nations and there's going to be some changes and we haven't we haven't seen what this verse says let's read it again let's read both of these verses mm -hmm. again. 10 and as 20. you go as you go preach saying the kingdom of heaven has come near heal the sick raise the dead cleanse the lepers cast out demons freely you have received freely give Okay, so I want to go back yeah. to that one little phrase there, as you go. As you see, go. See, if I had a kingdom mindset, I mean a church-centered mindset like I always did, 
then I would always think, well, I've got to go to church on Sunday morning and whatever's going to be done is going to be done in that little building. But mm-hmm, let me tell you, mm-hmm. this is as you go. Well, Woo, that means wherever, glory. You go, wherever you go, you, you bring the kingdom. You demonstrate the kingdom. You go to Walmart, you bring the kingdom. You do proclaim the kingdom. You demonstrate the kingdom. Yes, you, you go to work. Wherever you go, you proclaim the kingdom. You demonstrate the kingdom. That is what we are called to do as you go, not uh, the pastor did at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. Now, the other one is Matthew 24. This thing's not going to end until it's preached. The the gospel gospel. of the kingdom shall be preached in all of the world as a testimony to all the nations. And then the end will come. (laughs) We're not there yet. We're not there yet. It hasn't been preached to all the nations yet. Not the gospel of the kingdom. Kingdom. Now, there may have been some... The gospel uh, of salvation. Salvation. Or there may have been even social gospel. Do good. Uh, be good. Do good. Get more. Uh, there may have been a lot of things <laughs> uh, preached uh, to a lot of places. But this is the gospel of the kingdom. Oh, hallelujah. And it's going to be demonstrated in all the nations. And then the end will come. Okay. You know, and, and I believe that as the Lord and by the spirit of God awakens us to the kingdom then we are ready. We are ready to go and give our testimony. We are ready to go and and speak to people about healing. We're ready to go and cast out devils. We're ready to do these scriptures right here. As you go, this is what you're going to do. Hallelujah. Okay. And I'm going to bring this to a close. And I want Sherry to read Luke 16, 16 in two different uh, translations because this is a verse that applies to you and me. Mm. And it says, we need to be on fire for the kingdom. Hallelujah. To bring forth the kingdom. Well, let's first read out the New American Standard. The law and the prophets were proclaimed until John came. That's John since, the Baptist. Since that time, the gospel of the kingdom of God has been preached. Okay, that's now. Since John the Baptist until now, okay, the gospel of the kingdom has been preached, okay? And everyone is forcing his way into it. Oh, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's just look at that last phrase. That's the phrase I want you to get. Mm -hmm. Everyone is forcing forcing his way into it. So, So you think, oh, I don't have to be concerned about the kingdom. Let somebody else do it. This is everyone. I believe that's Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. me. Everyone forced their way into the kingdom. Your pastor may not have been telling you about the kingdom. But you need to go force your way into, into the, the kingdom. kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, may, you may have been watching TV and they may not have ministered on the kingdom, but it's your responsibility Everyone is to force themselves into the kingdom. Hallelujah. And now let's look at it, the Passion Translation and see if it gives you a way out. I don't think so. But we'll see. <laughs> the law of Moses and the revelation of the prophets have prepared you. You're prepared. Uh-huh. For the arrival of the kingdom announced by John. Oh, you're, you're prepared Hallelujah. for Hallelujah. the awakening of the kingdom. Praise God. Since that time, the wonderful news of God's kingdom is being preached. And people's hearts burn, burn. Is your heart burning yes. tonight? Hallelujah. Is your heart burning? Oh, is it on fire? Is. With extreme passion. Extreme passion. So would you read that again? With extreme passion to receive it. Hallelujah. Is your heart burning? Burning. With extreme Extreme passion passion. to receive the gospel of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the gospel of the kingdom. So as you go, Go. you will proclaim the gospel Gospel of of the the kingdom. kingdom. And demonstrate the gospel of the kingdom with signs and wonders. For Jesus Christ will be working with you in signs and wonders. Woo! Glory! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. (laughs) Thank you for being here tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I'm going to open the floor in just a moment. 
uh, I want to see all of your faces. Those of you that that are showing us your faces, I uh, see Dan and Peggy there. Praise the name of Jesus. And see Rebecca. Uh, see Michelle Cannon. I just love all of you, and and we are kingdom leaders. I said it again. And as he awakens us, and this is a, this is an awakening to different areas of the word of God. For instance, uh, are you awakened uh, to prosperity? If you are, then you are you you're rich. Hallelujah. If you're awakened to the gospel of healing, then your body is healed. Hallelujah. And that's what you go forth with. And so there's there's an awakening in different areas, uh, and and we want uh, that that's that's part of the kingdom, uh, in Jesus' name. And so as you go, as you go, go as a kingdom proclaimer, a kingdom preacher, if you will. And, Hallelujah. And, and demonstrator. And demonstrator. And revival Woo! and reformation. reformation bring it hallelujah you're the one to bring it thank you jesus hallelujah i see